Welcome back. Rabbi Marvin Heyer is the founder and dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, one of the most important institutions dealing with Judaism and American democracy in the country. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. So, uh, Adam Schiff, the uh, chair of the House Intelligence Committee, said, listen, we understand that this was a bad guy, uh, Qasem Soleimani, but if you're going to go after the architect of the attacks of America on American troops, why don't you go after the Ayatollah, which, of course, we would never do. Do you agree with that parallel? No, I, I don't, because I think the comparison is not fair. First of all, the Ayatollah regards himself as a spiritual leader. Had we gone after the Ayatollah, the reaction of the world, in the Muslim world, would have been far greater. The man, Suleimani, he was a general, a tactician. He did the dirty work. So it's fair to go after the guy who does the dirty work. In the Second World War, uh, the president of Czechoslovakia went after Heydrich because Heydrich was the guy who did the dirty work. You've suggested that going after this general was equivalent to going after Osama bin Laden. Well, let me say this. He was the architect of 9-11. He was a hated person in the, we in the West. But Osama he was in bin Laden. That's correct. But he was basically in retirement. Here's a man who is actively, Suleimani, is actively plotting to murder Americans. Whether he does it in this month, next month, two months from now, that's his full-time job. Osama bin Laden was hiding from the world. So, so the question is, do we want to do something about the arch-terrorist that is a danger every minute that he lives? Because he's going to go after Americans, hit the embassies, kill Americans, whether it's going to be in the Middle East or anywhere else. He wouldn't think twice. So this debate over an imminent threat, you say, miss, misses the point. I think it misses the point. Also, he doesn't stick to one area. People forget. He was the, the, the operations officer in, um, in the Omnia attack in Argentina. And he attacked a, a Jewish community center where young children were present. In other words, he, you're talking about an arch terrorist with murder on his hands. That's a little different than a person who delivers sermons like the Ayatollah. Are you concerned at, uh, about the debate taking place in Washington? The effort last week, for example, the war powers vote against President Trump. Some would suggest, though, that that, is, that was a principled vote. They should have had it earlier against George W. Bush as well as uh, Barack Obama. Look, look, our country is divided. It, it's very unfortunate that it is, it is divided. But I think that we have to unify in the sense if we don't do anything about these terrorists, they now have weapons that previous generations never thought of. They're going, to, they're going to endanger our world. If we don't nip it in the bud, we will pay a greater price. So you support what the president did? As I supported what President Obama did to Osama bin Laden. Let's talk about the Jewish community that you represent in so many respects. There has been anti-Semitism throughout the history of the United States. Where does it stand now? Because it appears from the outside that we've seen a dramatic uptick. These are the most dangerous times. I've never seen a more dangerous time. I'm 40 years since we created the Simon Wiesenthal Center. I spoke to Simon Wiesenthal numerous times. I know if he would be alive, he would say, this is unprecedented in the greatest democracy in the world. There isn't a single day where we do not rep report outrageous anti-Semitic attacks all over the country. Why? because we live in a different world now. We live in the world of tweets and Twitters. In other words, when the Nazis were, were, were in business in the 1930s, before they can get their message to the entire population of people who felt like that, it might take months. It might even take years. Now, the haters, they can speak to the world in seconds. And they've, it's crossed the Atlantic, and I do not agree. I, I don't mean to address this from the point of view of politics, but I do not agree that when those people say that, you know why anti-Semitism has come to America? Because of President Trump. I think that's preposterous. Why? Anti-Semitism has infected all of Europe for the last 15 years. If you're a Jew, you can't wear a yarmulke in the center of Paris. You can't do it in Berlin. You can't do it in the Netherlands. You cannot do it in areas of London. 
so it, it naturally crossed the Atlantic. So if you're saying, where did the malignancy start? It didn't start in the United States a year and a half or two years ago. It's been in Europe for 15 years, and we've been watching it. Are you being squeezed by the far right and the far left? Because Correct. They, because on college campuses, there have been concerned that, uh, is, it, that, that Jewish students, Israeli students have been targeted. Absolutely. I, I think targeted unfairly. BDS, boycott, divest, and sanctions. Think about it. The Hamas is a terrorist organization. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization. Has the United Nations or anybody come up with an idea of BDS against Hamas, against Hezbollah? They come up with BDS against the state of Israel, where a Palestinian was served in the, in the Israeli Supreme Court. How many Jews are serving in Arab parliaments? What are you hoping for in this political season, in this presidential year? Well, I, I hope, look, we're Americans. This is the greatest country in the world. And in the way we conduct our democratic, our debates when we run for the presidency of the United States should be bearing in mind that we still believe in the principles of tolerance, of human dignity, of decency, and we shouldn't lose that even during a presidential campaign. Rabbi Marvin Heyer of the Simon Wiesenthal Center, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Coming.